Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about picking the right nitrous kit for your application. So first you want to establish the goal. How much power are you looking to add to your vehicle? How much power can the current set of hard parts support? And how much power can your current fuel system support? After you've established your goal, you have to go through a set of terms and understand which nitrous kit is good for you. Are you going to get a wet system, a dry system? Will it be a single nozzle, a fogger, or a plate? There are some vehicles that there is a specific plate that you bolt on behind the throttle body that works. You're also going to want to know what activation method you're going to use, whether or not you'll do it through your ECU or a series of switches that you will install with the nitrous kit. There are also a few problems that you will incur that there are accessory solutions for. You will also want to get into a purge system. Uh, the purge kit will basically take the air that accumulates in the nitrous line out of the line, making sure that the nitrous kit hits as hard as it can when you activate it. So first we can talk about the difference between a wet nitrous kit and a dry nitrous kit. A wet nitrous kit is going to flow fuel through the system. So there's going to be a second solenoid. So you'll have a nitrous solenoid and a fuel solenoid. It's going to flow fuel through the system and fuel and nitrous are going to enter the intake manifold at the same time. A dry nitrous kit just injects nitrous. There are dry kits out there on the market that do fuel enrichment through raising fuel pressure and there are dry nitrous kits that you will have to rely on your ECU to do fuel enrichment. Either way you will need to add fuel. You can't just add nitrous, the engine will run lean and break. So this is a dry single nozzle. This is just going to inject nitrous. I currently have this on my Supra using about a 35 horsepower jet. It, even though it's not a lot of nitrous, it works very well. If you haven't had nitrous before in your life, it's a lot of fun. The next one would be the wet single nozzle. So this is going to add nitrous and fuel to the engine. Again, mounted in the inlet pipe, pointed at the engine. Then we have this throttle body mount, which will go right between the throttle body and the intake manifold. Really clean, easy installation. Solenoids are already mounted. You know, it works out to be a really good deal if you have one available for your particular application. So this is a direct port kit. This is when you start to get really serious. The effort here, is to inject the same amount of nitrous in each cylinder. So with a single nozzle kit, you're going to get a different amount of nitrous in each cylinder because the intake manifold does not flow equally to each cylinder. Some engines create a worse problem than others and at different nitrous levels, the problem can show itself. So you're not gonna put 200 horsepower through a single nozzle on a variety of intake manifolds and have it work out. Where a direct port, you can get away with a bunch. So once you've picked which nitrous kit you're going to get, you're going to move into your activation method. At a minimum, the nitrous kit is going to have a toggle switch that arms and disarms the system and a micro switch on the throttle that will activate the nitrous kit when it's wide open. Be mindful that you do not want to turn the nitrous kit on below 3000 or so RPM. The engine cannot tolerate the additional stress at low speed it won't go well. So make sure the engine speed is up before you turn the nitrous kit on. The preferred method of controlling your nitrous kit is with a dedicated controller. This will allow you to set up things like engine speed on, engine speed off, throttle position on, throttle position off, vehicle speed on, vehicle speed off, boost level on, boost level off. This will avoid uh, hitting the rev limiter on the nitrous, turning the nitrous on too soon, turning the nitrous on too late. Basically, it takes you out of the equation where you can just have the nitrous come on through a set of parameters that is the smartest way for you to race your car. If you're using a standalone ECU, you can control the nitrous through that. Uh, a lot of the standalones nowadays have uh, nice nitrous controllers. They're uh, multi-stage if you're running more than one stage of nitrous. Say if you have a stage of nitrous for staging the vehicle and then nitrous for when you're going down the track, uh, the more current ECUs can handle those tasks. Um, so you can go that route if you have a standalone ECU already. If you don't have a standalone ECU, prefer that you buy a nitrous controller. It'll save you a lot of hassle. So there are a few accessories that you're going to want to purchase when you get your nitrous kit. A bottle heater is one of them. It's a key component. When the nitrous system is cold and the bottle pressure is low, it's not going to make the 
power that it would when it's between its operating range of say 900 to 1050 PSI. If you're using a wet system and the bottle pressure is low, the engine is going to run rich. Um, if the bottle overheats or goes over pressure, um, it's got a blow off tube which will evacuate the bottle. Um, if the bottle is mounted in the car, you're going to want to have a blow down tube in the cabin. Uh, there's a lot of bad things that can happen if you don't have one. The next accessory would be a bottle opener. Uh, if the bottle is mounted in the trunk of the car, you can have a remote switch to open and close the bottle so you don't have to get out of the car and open the bottle or crawl back in the hatch and open the bottle and close the bottle when you're done. So if you're one of those guys that always wants to be ready, get a remote bottle opener and the bottle heater, and that way the system's always ready to run. Another accessory that you'll probably purchase is the purge valve. The purge valve is a smaller solenoid that bleeds the air out of the nitrous line. So every time you change the bottle, you get air in the line and the purge valve basically releases that air. So when the nitrous system does activate, it's got nitrous flowing into the engine instantly, uh, making for a harder hit um, if you're using that to get the car moving or get it using it to get your turbocharger online. So we're going to brush on a few installation problems that you can incur if you don't pay attention. The first one, probably the most common, is listening to your friends. I know your friends are experts, they know they're experts, but what I want you to do in this case is just follow the manufacturer's instructions. The manufacturer's instructions are going to keep you out of trouble. You're going to have the system wired properly, key on operation with an arming switch, you're going to have the bottle mounted properly. You're going to have this, the nozzle or plate or multi-nozzle pointed at the engine. Um, you know, you, you may think it's funny, but I've, I've had cars come to the dyno before with the plate on backwards and the carburetor gets all sorts of upset when you turn the nitrous kit on. It makes for some strange things. So in closing, uh, we've covered what system you're going to buy and, and what you need to get it up and running. I want to try to get one point across before you guys go out and get started with this stuff. Please, please just follow the instructions, install it the way the manufacturer tells you to install it, reduce timing the way the manufacturer tells you to reduce timing, wire it the way they tell you to wire it, mount it the way they tell you to mount it. If you follow the manufacturer's instructions, you're going to get started on having a lot of fun for a very small investment. As you become more experienced with nitrous, you can edge up on timing and increase jet size. Consult your tuner or your engine builder on how much nitrous you should run getting started. Not every engine will just swallow a 200 shot of nitrous and live to tell. You have to be mindful that if the engine only makes 200 horsepower, putting 100 horsepower with the nitrous on it is a, a great amount of stress and that you have to be mindful of how you add it and how you mitigate that stress so the components live long. So. Go through these rules, don't listen to your friends, follow the instructions, and have a lot of fun because nitrous used properly is a lot, a lot of awesome for a little bit of money. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.